recently I posted a voice memo on YouTube about lessons learned from dealing with lawyers. This is about lessons learned from uh, meeting women. So having a person like Charlie Manga in my mental uh, references has been quite interesting. And why I know about him through study, why I found it interesting that his wisdom applies in so many ways. And the example of this lesson learn from women is attributed from such insight I got from him. One incident I remember somewhere in perhaps Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting, someone was talking about the women, or maybe some other occasion I don't remember, but he was basically saying, in short phrase, as he does quite often, expect, don't expect too much, was his answer to this question about women. And I thought that that's very profound. Um, why? I'm not quite sure, but I kind of got the picture. But later I found what it means. The point that I want to share in this first memo is invert. That's a good way to think. Not thinking forward, but from the end coming backward to see how it may appear. For example, with women, there's a moment of pleasure that may come with having a wonderful woman. And that attract men, their emotion, and men including myself. <laughs> and there are cases of, of that here and there I can easily point out. And you do things for that moment of pleasure or some expected result. And that's kind of natural because that is the stimuli to drive men to move. A sexual desire being one and there are a bunch of others. But even example, I have quite a few of them, but one is the Swiss woman I met and uh, she came to my place and there's a jacuzzi in the back and the swimming pool. And uh, prior to this, I had a meeting with her and she enjoyed, so she came. And she actually arrived with a Jaguar, an expensive car, and, and we were to have the afternoon, the second date, basically. And when I was preparing something, she came out without anything on the top just a small tiny you know underwear <laughs> and i got the big surprise i didn't know what to do so i was in the water and diving i remember this precisely and then long story short i was debating what to do and decided to you know play with her much later but just do some something i don't remember maybe i was just cleaning up the the barbecue said where I was going to put the uh, lobster I caught, and therefore we can spend time. In the meantime, I think the interest she had toward me, you know, went lower down because I, my reaction was not as appropriate as she thought. So I missed the occasion. We came close, but nothing happened that evening. And Afterward, she was just beautiful and everything, and I was wondering, what, what did I do? And that image came back, I don't know, maybe 100 times, sometimes in meditation, sometimes when I'm sleep, sleeping and then popped up and it bothered me. Okay, that's one example. To make a point before I go to the next example, I feel that intuition of me taking time was also a right decision, if you think about it. And that's very difficult for me or the man to think about. But uh, if I bring Charlie Manga in this picture, you may be affected by certain things and make a decision 
but you may pay a high price for that. I guess that's his message. It's a man with integrity. And it's very difficult to think like that. But if that is wisdom, which I tend to agree after years of meeting women and other incidents that I went through, including this voice memo I talked about, the uh, lawyer, dealing with lawyer, there's a danger to get into something, especially when you are not sure what this person or entity is about. So naturally, women play this game with the attraction and you know, perfume or the wear, the things they wear or whatever the gesture they may have. And they, they are skillful in it. Therefore, Charlie Manga's point of uh, expecting, um, what, what's the word? Don't expect too much. Is to point also that when you go through this process, you may end up paying a higher price for the little pleasure of a you know, moment of some nature, or sexual, whatever the case may be. So inverting, you know, thinking downward and coming backward and see where you are and what's the opportunity or the reward and the risk that is involved is a very insightful investment, decision of your time and approach. Back. So the hesitation I had at the time was very intuitive, actually, to think through without me knowing that that was going on in my mind. That was my justification. According to Charlie's view, that was probably the right intuition I had uh, so that you don't get into a difficulty after all for the moment of pleasure. He says he's a survivor, you know. He says that the you tend, people tend to victimize themselves, but he cut through it. And the word he used at the end of that little talk was, I'm a survivor. You know, he's a survivor to be a billionaire, wise man, respected, and have great friends that he trusts. But he have to survive to get there. That's the main point, and that's the meaning of his word when he, he says, don't expect too much. Simple sentence, few words, and I didn't, I was laughing. I could get the nuance of it, but not to the degree which took place. Like I start to realize it after, I don't know, how many months after I listened to his saying. He's like a Zen monk in a way, just say sharp word without explanation. If you get it, you may get it. If you don't, you never get it. But just laugh and pass by because at the end you have to execute what you learn. Otherwise, what's the point of getting the point? It's no point. <laughs> so, interesting issue about this, my feeling at the time and then agonizing night and the time I had of why didn't I do what I could have kind of thing with this woman. Give me an, uh, give you another example was the case of the more recent one actually. And this is also interesting that uh, I met this woman, we had a time at the beach, she invited me to her place and we had a nice afternoon. And in that period of the first meeting, actually I met her like uh, seven years ago prior to this. I didn't remember, but she did remember in this little town. Anyway, the point is that I was suddenly attracted to her as if I was falling in love, which I really felt. Oh, this is profound. And the moment happened I may have mentioned this somewhere else, that uh, I thought the blonde hair that I saw in the sun looked just gorgeous. 
and I was picturing how wonderful I have her with me to wander around the town or when visiting my friend in Japan and traveling. And I thought I can go many places with her. But that was the moment of thought. She was not, uh, uh, you know, topless or anything. She was just uh, behaving. And she gave me a tangerine and peeling off, you know, on her, in her hand and give it to me. And, and not many women have done it because usually they just hand out the tangerine so that I can peel off. That's easier. And, and those little gestures and the sight in the sun trigger me that oh, this is a marvelous moment. So what happened afterward was that I still was not moving fast and saying anything. I was just observing and figuring out what's going on and uh, assessing the situation, which is the right attitude about investment or the doing things in life, which is the investment of you know, doing, resulting in your time and energy. And it's not the equation of uh, this kind of reward and you know things like that. It's much more intangible, emotional, and attraction is very difficult to quantify because you get drawn into it. Therefore, the love is blind. And I really felt like it. But we left thinking that we meet again, and she wanted to meet and all that. A wonderful, you know, afternoon. You know, five, six days later, when she came back from the town, she sent me an email saying that she found another man, or she knew this other man, and she just reconnected, and therefore I was ditched. I, I read this email, but before that I had the sense of something may not happen the way I thought. How intuitive, I don't know. But I already agonized that why didn't I say something more to open up my heart, so to speak. But I was playing cool, thinking I have time. Or that was the right thing to do. But later, I kind of reflected and thought, that why didn't I say how I felt, things like that. Funny thing is that when I received the email, I said, well, good luck. I sincerely felt that uh, she, that's the right thing to say. Even though part of me, you know, I have mini me within me, you know, this mini me is saying that why not? And the other one says, you know, that was the right thing. So there's a conflicting situation in myself, but this big other mini me, or, or more important one, was basically wishing her the best. So this view was as if looking at myself from the another dimension as if this is like part of the scenery in the movie you know you are not you are there as a protagonist but you can also see yourself telling okay this happens and if that's good for her and that's her decision that's all right so the first case of swiss women and this other case which is actually the kiwi woman is somewhat similar, the, 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 the idea of sexual appeal or the idea of, you know, friendliness and happy time look different, but in a sense, it's kind of the same. And therefore, I bring back Charlie Manga, expecting not much. Be realistic. Life is long and don't make the little movement and the you know, um, appeal to drive you, and you need to survive. I, I'm like a Don Quixote. I want to challenge and do things and experience and the fullest of life. And it's very difficult when the stimuli is there and if you do not. But there are two parts of me, if I can explain this. One is more animalistic and uh, you know, 
challenging and having fun attitude. The other one is the calm, quiet mind to observe the situation, to understand, or not to expect too much. Expect unexpected and just be calm so that you don't move around too much and just uh, you know be sincerely living and truthfully living trying to understand which is a difficult thing but still you know to capture the essence of what's going on by looking at the situation from different angle so synthesis is critical not just one angle and go for it but also look from different angle and different references and I talk about the triangulating and all that that I did in there that you know, voice memo posted on the YouTube. So life is such that I explained the case with lawyer. You know, that, that was another case, not for women, but uh, I had this intuitive sense of what's going on. Is this feasible? Is it something I should do or have them as a reference so that I don't make a big mistake if I do by myself? And uh, at the first instance, I noticed that something was not quite right, and immediately I decided not to use them, but go on my own. So each case brings the danger. Each case, you may be attracted to a, a, have appeal in certain element, but you need to be able to see the other way to look at the situation, as if from the third person's point of view, or inverting from whatever may happen and backward to think that, are you sure you really want to do it? Because the consequence of certain things may lead to issues that you may not want. As it turned out, this Kiwi woman's case was that uh, she seemed to be busy with family and this and that, going to Auckland or whatever. And and uh, while she implies and thinks and feels that she wants to have a quiet, calm living, but her life is busy. So after the fact, I can tell you what you know about the case with the Swiss situation too. You know, it, it may may be a momentary decision, and that may be wrong, and it could be right. You know, it may bring into the wonderful situation. That's why. I may agonize, but at the end, there's no end to this probably, but uh, what Charlie Manga says about don't expect too much, well, maybe especially women may not be the right sentence, but uh, uh, I'm applying that idea in this case, because it's not fair for women if I say it out loud. But at the same time, the structure is such that uh, you know, some women may want to, or most of women may want to attract men doing whatever technique and ideas that they can bring into. And it may be nat look natural just peeling off the tangerine or you know, moving the you know, ha hair in the sun or whatever. So if that's life, if that's men and women, if that's what goes on in our mind and body, you know, brain and or the emotion and the mind structure, and to get to know the bottom of it and what causes what and what can happen, I have to make a judgment. That's not easy. But what's good is to have a reference, the voice, the ideas that is shared by a person like Charlie Manga, at least in my case, that I felt. And I can connect the dots to see what he may mean. Don't expect too much. I'm the survivor. That kind of thing. As a, is that the weight of gold. I don't know if there's such an expression, but uh, has such a deep um, sense of uh, understanding of what life is. So recently I went through these experiences, the lawyer, I figured out you know, there's an issue about the lawyer too, and I think there was 
something Charlie Manga said about it. The lawyer can argue about this and that and twisted issues to resolve. And his point was the life is found somewhere else instead of spending so much time in this detail of the logic and how to play with it. I think that makes sense. As a management consultant, initially working in Boston Consulting Group, I thought kind of similar that to make a presentation, you have to go through all the exercise of thinking different angles and make a point in a succinct manner and a convincing manner. And if you put so much effort in it, it's almost like trying to make a good joke out of whatever the event that takes place so that people can get the point at the end. So the exercise become very superficial if you twist your mind to figure out the way of presenting things instead of the substance of it. And there should be a balance that we should have. I'm not saying that's what they do all the time, but there's a nuance of that. So the, this discussion I went through about women, it's just a representation of some of those nuances that we may need to detect so that we avoid the pitfall, the traps, although it could be a very nice, sweet trap that you want to fall into at times. But the risk of doing that could be also profound. And therefore, let's go back to this key point that I said elsewhere. Have a calm and quiet mind to see things clearly as it is, not to see things as it looks like and make a decision. And the life brings us lots of traps and opportunities or the whatever the combination of it. We have to face that, as I said over and over, with a mind which is truthful and sincere. And I'm saying that's the conclusion of this. I want to maintain it, not lose the balance. Even if there are lots of noise out there or inside of me, let's make sure to have a balance, clear mind, so that make we make a good judgment that we don't regret or we don't agonize afterwards and have that edge edge of competence how much you can do within your reason not extend too much so that you don't get fall into the danger even if that looks like promising idea we need to be very careful about it we need to use the brain, reference, triangulate, and all that on one end, using the mind to put things together, but that also connected to a heart, the genuine sense of what we can do with the calm and quiet mind to come up with insight. That to me is very important and it's worth living a life even if it's turbulent and difficult and agonizing at times to be able to confirm the very very core of being truthful and sincere.